something like that. But instead, I'm going to start talking about manufacturing. That's the business that I'm in at Calmar, and I've got a video here. It's a time lapse of one of our machines getting worked on. So if the guys in the back are ready, can you can you roll that video? Those are the slides. I think I, uh, I gave you a video that you can add to it. So this is what happens in manufacturing every day, and it, it goes pretty fast. Looks like you got it. Can you make it play? So this is our primary machine. It's 120,000 pounds of steel. And this one is a defense logistics agency machine. They're rebuilding it. It gets uh, torn down and then reassembled. And this is a 90-day process being shot in about one minute. Everything gets done. The machine goes out to the test track. It gets checked. It gets brought back in with one final piece of assembly. It needs to get worked on. It's a 12 foot long cylinder that they pull out the back end of the machine. Here it is. And using the big yellow frames, you'll see that cylinder come out. So that's not necessarily innovative. It would be innovative if we could make everybody work that fast. So if we could, let's go to the slideshow. And uh, let's think of innovation. Go to the next slide, please. That's the RT-240. It's called the Wretch by the Army. Weighs in at 120,000 pounds. And what it does is it moves the containers that logistics really uh, is required for going overseas. Next slide. We come out of Texas and San Antonio. Next slide. So here's two things that are innovative. The one on the left is just simply taking a container handler and turning it into a mobile crane. This was something the Army in Iraq wanted, and we were able to develop it through uh, Aberdeen Test Center, such that you could then use slings to pick up maybe battle damage equipment. You could pick up an MRAP and put it on a trailer. But that's not really true Army innovation. I don't think that gets to the level that we're looking for here. You know, the, using, the, using the guys from the current Army Strong commercials, what would they think in terms of innovation for a whole system? And to get there, you've got to take a look at what the Army does today as far as logistics. Next slide. So everything is ISO container based. The Army moves with 20-foot uh, containers. When a brigade goes overseas, they take up to 200 containers taking their supplies over there. It starts at a port. It starts using ship-to-shore cranes for high volume. Next slide. It gets transloaded. It's transloaded with a lot of pieces of equipment, but ultimately you're going to put that uh, material onto a rail car or you're going to put that equipment onto a tractor trailer. Next. And there's the bottom line. That's the way a brigade gets into the battlefield. It starts off with its equipment on the back end of a truck coming out of the port. But ultimately, you get to the end user. Next slide. This is a RT-240. It was taken in Haiti during the relief operations there about four years ago. Where the Army works, there's nothing on the ground. You've got to be able to operate in the dirt. You've got to be able to offload all the containers and stack them and process them and get ready for moving on to the next level. And that requires this massive machine called the RT-240. Next slide. It's got to be able to run in the dirt. It's got to be able to be driven and sustained by soldiers. Next slide. It even has to provide remote logistics. Here's an example with the uh, Causeway teams that come out of uh, Hampton Roads area. And this is the vehicle that you use when you don't even have a port and you want to execute remote logistics. Next slide. Here's it is using the watercraft that the Navy uh, Army has. Next slide. And ultimately, the machine is air deployable. This is the big thing about the vehicle. This is a shot of a DLA machine that's getting loaded aboard a C-17 to go to Liberia during the uh, Ebola crisis. This is the response effort. Next slide. So that's, that's logistics today. It's ISO container based. Uh, everything's deployable. Everything operates in rough terrain. But the question is, to be innovative, what goes on next? What's in the future? 
So let me take a look at what is in the art of the possible. What is the real state of the art as far as logistics? Next slide. I still think for the next 20 years, the Army's going to use ISO containers. That could be the third core that's going overseas. It's just a stack of boxes. Ultimately, that's what's going to have to be handled. Next slide. Today, these containers come on huge container ships. This is just an average one in the port of Long Beach, and it's going to offload about 7,000 containers. It's going to offload those things at a rate of about 700 a day. So there's a lot of throughput. And the way the throughput is handled currently is through automation. Next slide. The ship to shore crane identifies each container and puts it into a totally robotic work area where robotic machines start moving those containers to get them to their final destination. They use these automated straddle carriers that you see here. Next slide. This machine is fully automatic. It basically takes the container and puts it where the computer system tells it to go. And while it's doing that, it avoids any personnel uh, as far as contact goes. And it also creates a great record for where the equipment is going to be at. It delivers it to what the industry calls a box. Next slide. Those are huge straddle cranes. And ultimately, the way it works out is a truck driver checks in, says, I need box five. I'm going to destination Y. They say, great, go over to container 10, park there, and it automatically loads. There's no human interaction with this container being placed upon that truck. The next stop for the truck on the next slide is just as the truck, truck leaves. It gets checked not only by a Wi-Fi system, but also by a optical character recognition system that identifies the truck, it identifies the equipment, and you've got in-transit visibility of where this thing is going. So this is the state of the art, and this is what I think the art of the possible is, if we go on to the next slide. The key here is, is that each container is not being tracked. There's nothing magical about it. It's the MHE that's getting tracked. It's the vehicles that are moving it. Once the computer says, put box five in position Y, it keeps a record of it. So when they want box five, they just say, go to position Y. It has to be there, because every vehicle is connected. This picture here is a shot of a uh, empty container handler. And up on top of that white PVC tube is the reception and data transmitting system such that this system is connected in with the overall system. So the operator of the port or the terminal can sit there and look for every piece of MHE and every piece of a container and tell what it is and where it's going. And that's what we don't have right now. Go to the next slide. This is what I would call the Army Operations Forward. This is a, a, a transfer supply point. It's probably done with clipboards. It's probably done with laptop computers using Excel spreadsheets and programs like that. But the idea is, could you take the digitization, could you take the autonomous ops that exists today in a major port moving hundreds or thousands of containers a year and put it into a rough terrain operation like that? We think that our vehicle was designed to go there. Therefore, we should be able to get that data into the uh, operator's cab. Next slide. I think that's the innovation that those guys in the commercial are looking for. They're looking for something that's going to be working that's revolutionary for logistics, and it's something that's going to exist out there in the next 20 years. Next slide. So digitize and autom automation is what the two things that we can do. Everything can be done using the ISO standards, so you can put together those linkages. The things that we take advantage of in our cell phones are things that we can bring into the battlefield. That means you can have data passing, you can have networking, and you can provide that pure in-transit visibility that echelons above battalion are going to need to see in there. Here's something else. We can also do command and control to the operator. I mean, right now, there's a lot of ground guides. There's a lot of people using walkie-talkies to tell the operator where to go. There's an ability to tell him, sort of like a, a chat room, if you will, the information that he needs in the cab as far as what box to move and what execution to, uh, to happen. The other thing that technology is going to allow us to do is start providing some return on investment. Just by simply upgrading machines and putting the modern technology in them, you can get a 15% improvement in fuel efficiency. Just cutting down the idle time of the engine and cutting the power curves of the engine, you can start getting your uh, return on investment that way. And like Colonel Bailey mentioned, you could get rid of manpower. I mean, right now, these, these transfer per points are just surrounded by people guiding these machines. If you provide the operator more SA, now you cut down the manpower requirement and you start getting a benefit that way. Last two I'll just give you examples about is about safeties and efficiencies. Just quick examples. Next slide. We take the machine, we put a camera system on there, the stuff that you would have on your car today so you can back up and not hit, hit grandma when you're in the parking lot. 
That picture there is one of the rental cars that the soldiers brought, parked on the lot, and then got busy working. And the next thing you know, you've got a 120,000 pound machine trash in the rental car. That's just a quick example of where you could get some savings and really improve that situation awareness just through cameras. Next slide. Here's an even better one. You can use millimeter wave radar. You can use personal uh, tracking systems such that if somebody gets near one of these big machines operating, you could, you could take the machine and pull it out of uh, drive. You could put it into neutral. You can give a warning to the operator. You can give a warning to the person on the ground. So you really enhance safety. And that's just something that is as common to do at a port system. Next slide. Here's something else you could do. You could put a, a sensor on it that's going to make the machine avoid crushing that car. It's going to give it a proximity warning. It could even stop the machine before it gets there. All things that are common in a big port with a lot of activity. Next slide. So that's about it. Uh, it's a unique example. It's taking the RT240 and talking just about expeditionary logistics and going, what's in the art of possible out there? Uh, really, you could change it all by bringing the technology of today and putting it in there and getting it so it flows forward into the, uh, the Army's battle space. Here's something else I'll tell you is that there's a lot of new technology out there, and it's all really cool. Everybody likes something. But you've got to be able to use it. You've got to be able to take the technology and get a benefit for it. It's got to make a difference for what you're doing. And in this particular business, it's moving containers forward and taking care of the logistics in a better way. Um, joint uh, logistics calls for containerization. And we think that if you invest in the main machine that really handles all those containers, that's when you get the uh, expeditionary enabler. And that's what you get for uh, innovation. And that concludes my briefing. Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for filling in. William, let me ask you a question. Where, where are you? How much traction have you made uh, in the Army? Lots. No, seriously. Uh, the Army actually recognizes this and uses their R&D funding to look at things. In other words, it's great PowerPoint, but is it really a system that's going to work? And that's the whole purpose of R&D. And we're currently underway taking this technology, a lot of what I showed you there, and putting it on a machine and making it a prototype so that it can go to Aberdeen and get, right. get beat up and it will really work and not just be nice PowerPoint. So there is investment by the U.S. Army in this system. Are you working with LIA or the Logistics Innovation Agency? I think I should be. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe we can help. That'd be awesome. Production. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all very much. Enjoy your day. Thank you, sir.